So, hey, Off Color Fam, just want to let you know that um, I know you were expecting to hear part two of our Sonia Gupta episode, to tweet or not to tweet. We will absolutely be releasing the second part of that episode, but we had to, had to get some things off our chest tonight because we just went to see Spike Lee's Black Klansman. So, spoiler alert, bitches. First of all, it's a true story, so there. Are, I feel like how much spoilers could there really be? And second of all, if you haven't seen the movie yet and you're planning on seeing it, then I would say press pause and come back after you see it and then you'll be happy. And in the meantime, just listen to some of our older episodes if you're new to Off Color. How's that way, James? I do it? That's good. Theme music here. Okay, so. Now let's be clear, when we say we just saw the movie, Rebecca lives about five minutes from the multiplex. <laughs> I'm like still, I still have like an elevated heart rate. From, like we just saw the movie. Yeah, no, no, no. It was a nine, it was a 920 showing yeah, yeah. and it's like midnight. Oh my God. We're recording this at midnight. So I'm hoping that everybody knows. And I didn't get to introduce our guest. Yes, we should do that. So. I'm not sure if I should talk yet. What? <laughs> Relax. We do like a Merv Griffin very thing. Yeah, we do, we do. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna let you know. So okay. we, the basement is being blessed tonight and this is kind of a historic moment for off color because aside from white james who i don't really count as like a regular white person um we've never had a white guest before and tonight is the night we have actress katherine Earhart, and she hails from originally one of those dakotas which i can think of like a whiter place to be from exactly like i don't know is it are you from North Dakota or South Dakota? North Dakota. North Dakota. Bismarck, North Dakota. Oh, okay, so that's at least, that's a city I've heard of. Yes, it's the capital city. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. the capital. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're from the capital. Yes. How fancy. Exactly. So Catherine and I actually go kind of way back. We did a show okay. together. We did some theater together a couple of years ago. And then she left to pursue her dreams. And she's been living in Savannah, Georgia. And she's been a working actress there, which mm-hmm. is pretty amazing. It's exciting. She, yeah. So you've. I feel like you've been on a few shows, had some small parts. Um, can yeah. you just like name a couple shows that you've been on? Things that maybe people have seen? I mean, <laughs> very small okay, parts. Okay, that's okay. There's no, there's no small parts, only small actors. <laughs> very right? true, very true. Um, you know, just some regular TV shows, uh, Mr. Mercedes. Um, I just named a few in my head, but then I forgot them all. Uh, so I'm very Savannah, nervous. Is Savannah. Savannah like a TV town like Vancouver where like shows are filmed there? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's like more shows are coming there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like they filmed Underground there for mm-hmm. one or two seasons. Yeah. And they filmed, man, some other TV shows. Living the Dream was mm-hmm. one. Um, and there's, I think there's a couple more coming. And then you Soon, also so. go to Atlanta, though. I go to Atlanta for a lot. auditions a yeah. lot, and there's because that's such a big yeah. scene. It's like huge. I mean, the biggest right now. Yeah. Okay. For sure. So we'll yeah. be we'll be looking we'll be looking for you, Catherine. Yeah. So Catherine, in the near future, hopefully. Yeah, Catherine Earhart. It's like Amelia Earhart, but her name is Catherine. And yeah. she's alive and didn't... <laughs> fu- okay, okay, okay. I'll just throw there a, a few differences. <laughs> there are a lot of differences. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank and you for so having me. I'm, I'm really excited that you're here. Um, and I did want to... Uh, I just kind of want to get into this because the yeah. thing is, is we're not... This isn't going to be a super long episode um, because it's like after midnight and a lot of us have stuff to do tomorrow, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. I don't actually yeah. know. Um so we did go see the Black Klansman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was the second time for you. First, it time was. Class. It was. So, so if I may, mm-hmm. I just want to talk briefly, just a little bit about my experience, yeah. if you don't mind. As the second time, as the well, the first time. Okay. So the first Tell time me. I went to see it, I went with Danette Hollowell. Danette is this amazing jazz singer. She's on I don't know episode twenty one, I think, with Elizabeth Epps when mm-hmm. we um, we we had her on, and and you should definitely listen to that episode because if you don't. You know what's going to happen. Right, James? Which episode is it? Whose Democracy It's Called? I think so. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so you should check that out. Uh, especially with elections coming up. Anyway, so she and my husband, Ken, who's also been on the show, because, you know, whatever. I just like to have everyone I know on my show, because <laughs> it's my show, whatever. Um, anyway, we went to go see it at the Alamo Draft House here in Denver. And I was really excited to go see it. You know, we had a few drinks, but because we kind of went at the last minute our tickets, we couldn't get seats together. So my husband sat by himself and Danette and I sat together. Danette is black. And I think I had my, I I don't know if I had my braids done. I was doing something. And then I had on my African earrings, you know, I was like just being myself. And we were sitting in the theater and the first thing that happened, so the movie like starts and the literally within the first 30 seconds of the film, the white man next to me, elbows me and he's like oh what a great start to the movie oh I, this is great isn't this great and he was like so nervous I could tell to be sitting next to like two black women that he was definitely like overcompensating and I kind of felt bad for him but at the same time I also felt really annoyed because he literally kept elbowing he was like tapping me to tell me he wasn't racist was he older no hmm. he was young and oh. I think maybe drunk also and, but it was just kind of like, like any time like David Duke was on the screen or anything, he'd be like, fuck David Duke. Like, like I have never been in a movie theater where the white people are yelling shit like that. <laughs> like I was like, whoa, okay. You know? And so he's just like kept doing it through the whole movie. And it was like funny, but also like kind of uncomfortable for, for me. Yeah. And then at the end of the film, he clearly like, was standing, he was like standing in front of me and then Danette and I were kind of like, like trying not to like look at him and Danette's like, he really want to talk to you, girl. And I was just like, "Mm -hmm." and so finally like we ignored him enough that he walked away and then we looked down at the end of our seat and there was a black couple and he, the white guy and his girlfriend had got the black couple Mm. and they had him like trapped in the corner, (laughs) presumably to tell them how they were not racist and how they felt bad or whatever, you know? And it was so funny because Danette, (laughs) Danette may have been under the influence of something. I'm not sure. We did have a couple of drinks in there. And she was like, she was like, they sacrificed themselves as tribute for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, it was just like a kind of a crazy like experience. And so then tonight going to see it and the theater wasn't crowded at all. Mm-hmm. You know, there was like a handful of black people in there and some white people. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was fine, but then I was sitting in the middle between Catherine and White James. And White James, as a joke, like elbowed me right when the movie started and was like, I hate that guy. And I mean, it was like literally what happened to me at the theater. And so I guess, I mean, and then I heard a couple of like interviews and I heard Spike Lee talking about it uh-huh. and saying that people were like dead quiet. And then like white people were like apologizing yeah. to black people after the movie. And he was like, it's kind of like this like phenomenon. And I believe it, you know? And I felt like even tonight, like at the end of the movie, it was so quiet in there. And I was just like, <laughs> cause I'd already seen it. So I was ready. Um, anyway, so, so I feel like the experience was a little bit different for me and I had some anticipation about it because being, looking the way that I look, I feel like going to the movies with Danette, I look one way to people and then going to the movies with you guys, I look another way. Oh, sure. And so I thought that that was kind of like interesting to me, but, but before the movie started, there was that black couple behind us and the lady and I looked at each other and like, there was like a little nod exchanged and then, and I think because at first when I looked at her, I think she had like a feeling, I'm like, who knows, right? But I'm pretty sure, I know. And she looked at me and she kind of gave me a little look and then I was like, and then she was like, and then we just like, it was good, it was good, you it know? Was nod. It, it was, was the nod. nod. It was the nod. It was the nod. It was the nod. That's like in my little yes. screenplay that yes. you haven't read yet, wait, James. I have read it. It's only two pages. I read it. Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> it's good, it's right? It's good. You need to tighten up the ending. Um, <laughs> it runs a little long. <laughs> It's two minutes. It's, long. Two minutes. <laughs> it's literally two pages. Yeah. All right, rough subject. <clears throat> Although it did, the subject is film. Yeah. That's all right. And yeah. I am a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are. So some of that, and then one more thing I'll add before I start asking you guys questions because yeah, yeah. I actually okay. really want to hear what you have to say. Is though because mm-hmm. um, my film all mixed up are changing racial identities, which is not currently available for people to see, but it will be. Uh, we'll do some more screenings of it. We just screened it recently, and it was actually almost a year to the day of Charlottesville. 
And the first day of filming for us was August 12th. And so I have, um, I think almost everyone that we interviewed that day talked about it. Yeah. We didn't include all of it in the film because we were editing and yada, yada, yada. But it was definitely on our minds. And so then, then, then this film coming out at that time and then me screening my film again, like, I don't know, it brought up like a lot of emotions for me around that. And sure. because like I did, I don't even like know where this video is. I know it's out there, but like the day after Charlottesville, I did like a, I was like crying. I just felt so like upset. I don't even remember like what I was saying. Like, I just remember thinking like people would be willing to like kill me because I'm like the product of miscegenation and people would be willing to kill my son to find out that he's a quarter black. And that was really uh, obviously disturbing for me to be Mm -hmm. like considering. Mm -hmm. And then my family had just moved there too. Like my cousin married a white Jewish guy and just moved to Charlottesville, like right at that same time. So it was just a lot of, I think I even interviewed my dad. I asked my dad about it and I was like, can you believe this? My dad's like, yeah, that was old. You know what I mean? It was like, I don't know. So there's just, I think this film is important because of some of those, because of the parallels. Although I do feel like, I know Spike Lee, I know you're listening Spike, but sometimes I just feel like you did a little heavy handed from time to time. But I also kind of love that because I feel like that's right. like his, that's his style. Like I yep. feel like I have a style and he has, a, like people have their exactly. own marks that they put on their, on yep. their productions. Right. And so, but you could tell that he didn't write it him just alone. I felt like huh. I could, I could tell, but I've been, you know, I mean, New New York type person. So I yeah. feel like Spike Lee is some like that's a New York. <laughs> like you've been a fan for a yeah, long time. I would probably. say yeah, and I don't mean fan fan. Well, I mean, I mean no, watcher. I mean like, I've seen a lot he, of his yes, Spike's, yeah. Spike's difficult. He's yeah. his movies are he's so he's so idiosyncratic and he doesn't really give a shit about structuring or pacing things in a way that anyone expects him to. Mm. And so he's a little bit like, um, uh, you're going to hate this comparison, but it's, it's real. He's a little bit like a Woody Allen sort of filmmaker Mm. where you're like, um, when Spike Lee makes a movie, it's a Spike Lee movie. Yeah. Right. And it could be phenomenal and it could kind of be shit. Yeah. And, it's really it's because he's just kind of gonna kind of yeah. do it the way it feels right yeah. for him. Yeah, and, a Spike Lee joint. Yeah, right. I mean yeah. it feels like that. So and for yeah, sure. and I feel like so for me, like I don't watch every Spike Lee movie that comes out, right? But I know that like that uh, Red Hook. Did you see that? I didn't I see Red Hook. Like, so that I feel like was actually kind of an underrated film. It was one of the most uncomfortable films I've ever watched in my entire, I think it was called Red Hook Summer or something like that. And I feel like it was one of the most uncomfortable films I've ever watched in my life. Huh. And it had one of my favorite actors in it. And I don't know his name. And I feel like a trash can person for not knowing his name. I feel like name. that movie just blew me. I don't even know what you're talking yeah, about. I don't so either. it was, it was um, the guy from The Wire. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that makes the tiny furniture okay. Lester, and then he was on Treme, and like I can't think of his name, and I'm like real embarrassed. What's what's the movie about? Yeah, it's uh, it's about this guy, an older guy, black guy coming back after he's been like convicted of like sex crimes. He's like been molesting like children and shit. Oh, so it's like so. But then there's all this other stuff too. But like that, I just I don't even remember the whole plot of the film. I just remember how uncomfortable Ken and I felt watching it mm-hmm. and how at the same time it was like a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just, but it wasn't something like I'm like willing to like revisit sure. or you know what yeah. I mean? Like I was just like, oh, but I felt kind of like it was a little bit underrated. Same thing. Like I feel like Crooklyn was one of those movies that was a great movie and I just feel like people didn't even really care that much about it. Yeah. Sure. And I love Malcolm X. So, of course. but why wouldn't you? I feel like right. it was a great movie. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's my Spike, my Spike Lee thing is that I just, sometimes I just feel like he's just a little bit too, too Spike Lee, I guess. I don't know, but I still like it. I yeah. just feel like you're, sometimes you're like, oh, like a little bit, I don't know. Like it's just. It's weird. It's a weird. I mean, while I was watching it, I felt, so first of all, I think that, um, 
it's kind of like three movies at the same time. Mm. So it's like, on one hand, it's this based on a true story, semi biopic about this guy who did a thing. Like, you know, it's partly a historical film. Yeah. And I'll be honest, my personal bias, I struggle with those movies because I, the way my mind works is I, I know they're compressing events and characters and things, and right. I can't stop thinking about it. And making like, things up. I'm how, like, you know, wait, based on a true every story. major character managed to be on the same street at the same time. No, like, right. you know, that none of that happened. Me. Of right. course, none of it happened. But so, and like, I'm not, no, and I'm okay. not saying like, right. oh, Spike is pulling a fast one. Like, this is what you do when you make historical movies. Yeah. But I struggle with them for that reason. I always just want to go home and read the Wikipedia page and be like, okay, what actually happened? Yeah. Um, So it's, it's that movie. And then it's also um, this, it's kind of like an agitprop movie. It's kind of an agitative propaganda movie. Like it's, it's supposed to, make you want to jump out of your seat and fucking get something done when it's over. Yeah. And on that level, I think that's the level that it's most effective at. And Mm -hmm. it's easy, I think for people like us to sit there and be like, okay, you're really banging home this Trump is the new David Duke thing pretty (laughs) fucking hard. I get it, dude. Like, you know, um, at the same time, I think probably in that room with us, there were a lot of like, white moderates who've been actively avoiding that conversation in their lives Mm. who heard a lot of hype about this movie and went to see it. And I do suspect that it, it hit people in that place where it was supposed to. So, but I agree if I'm, if I'm talking about it from my personal experience, sometimes I have a hard time where I'm like the scene where he, you know, uh, curses out David Duke and hangs up on him. That's a big part of me. That's like, that's cathartic, but there's also a part of me that's like, Oh, that's Spike so Lee. That, that's yeah. Spike Lee. He yeah. just wants to just say yeah. all the fucking things. Yeah. Okay. He just wants fun. to say it. That was a it fun. Time. Felt felt good. But yeah. I did when I was watching the movie. I felt myself. So I know nothing about it. I'm a. Oh. I need to go into movies super cold. Okay. I hate okay. a spoiler. Okay. I thought you were asleep. No. That's how you know you had the movies with some white people. I'm, I'm like, are you awake? awake? <laughs> Rebecca tapped me at one point and asked me if I was awake because I like Rebecca will will make you come to the movies at midnight and record a podcast and they get mad at you for leaning back in your chair. I'm just, <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, how I'm just saying, dare you be I'm tired. just saying it was very different seeing next to you than it was Danette. I had a shush no, Danette that's true. from time to time. Danette I'm, uh, was was feeling it. I'm a very, I'm a stoic moviegoer. That is true. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like, but, <laughs> woo! I can't, I can't contain myself. But um, I did, so I know nothing about the story. I avoided all the, I, I just didn't, I hate okay. a spoiler. It kills okay. me. Okay, okay. Um, so I'm sitting there and I knew this wasn't going to happen, but as it's ratcheting up, I'm like, oh, can we just get, can we just get the Inglorious Bastards treatment? Can he just like gun down this room of dudes yeah, right now? Yeah, or whatever? Right. Like, you know, I just didn't want to... Because I know what America is actually like, and I know the ending's not going to be that happy. Yeah. And right. so, like, I'm sitting there just like, well, if this is based on a true story and it's based about race, the ending's going to be a bummer. <laughs> wouldn't, it be, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if he just, like, killed all these dudes? Wouldn't it be yeah. wonderful? And so that was kind of what I was, like, in the back of my mind hoping for. That would have been pretty on the nose. Them watching Birth of a Nation, I think, is pretty similar to the Inglorious Bastards yeah. scene where they're watching yeah. the Nazi propaganda yeah. film. So that probably right. would have been a, a step too far. And I know yeah. Spike yeah. hates Quentin Tarantino, so yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> word, word. He's, uh, Spike, I know you're listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, snap. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, Catherine, now you're an actress, so I know mm-hmm. you had to appreciate a lot of the things that were happening in that film around yeah. around some of the, the acting and the choices that people were making. Right. Um, but I want to ask you, like, as a, what I would consider like a well-meaning white person mm-hmm. who has yet to offend me, so good job. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope to continue that streak forever. <laughs> okay, 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 good. Um, I just kind That's of wondered. That's nice wonder... of you to bring her on the hot seat on your <laughs> podcast about complicated race issues. That's good. Uh, I just, if I it's going to happen, it's going to happen tonight. It's going to be like really and nervous. And it'll be like recorded. Yeah. Just kidding. I'm very nervous. No, but... You need to relax, homie. Okay. I just want to okay. know, Ask like, away. 
I'm just curious, I guess, because I did talk to my friend a little bit, a white friend, um, about this film, and she mm-hmm. was she loved it, and it was really resonated with her, and it and she had moments of of callback to it, sure, um, particularly because she's Jewish, okay, and she really did identify with Adam Driver's character, yeah, Ooh, what a. And then I want to get back to something about Adam Driver, but before I do that, I want to mm-hmm. ask you, kind of like, I don't know, can you just talk a little bit about? You know, what, what, what you the were feeling. Yeah, like when you were watching the film and I don't, I don't know. Can you just like speak a little bit about that? Yeah, please. Um, I was feeling a lot of things. And I understand, you know, the story you told about the first time you met with the guy telling you he's not a racist. And that I think that I had a lot of moments of being very uncomfortable and not because... I'm a racist in any way, but because like, I mean, this stuff really happened and like those people look like me and like are probably from the same place as me, you know, a decent amount of them. Yeah. North Dakota is very predominantly white. Yeah. And they're good people, but you know, of course there's craziness there too. So I had a lot of feelings of very uncomfortableness and then just like complete heartbreak yeah. Too. So it, there was a lot. It was a lot. But yeah. Yeah. I'm still trying to take it all in. I, but I think so. I mean, I think part of that, I guess, is I, I want people to understand um, that, that uncomfortableness. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Like you should feel uncomfortable. You should. That's the and point. And like to yeah. just like sit with it and not. And not feel like you have to like be like, I'm not a racist. Like, right. man, you at this movie, we're pretty sure you're not a racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, beyond right. like normal, internalized dominance, like part of yeah. the systems and structures that America sets up that makes white people kind of inherently racist, but not necessarily bigoted, but just talking about the power structures. Sure. So not like that, right? We all understand that Mm -hmm. (laughs) I hope (laughs) but that's but that's that I just I I just want people to be able to like sit with that and realize oh shit and then like what you said James like to take something from that right what are you gonna do about it like you should feel uncomfortable but don't just like sit on that like yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things, and this was something that um, when you listen to the part two of the Sonia Gupta episode, which you will be hearing in a couple of weeks, <laughs> um, but just that it's so hard to talk about race and racism with white people right. and um, in regards to her, particularly white women will become very so defensive that they actually become like offensive to oh, sure. the person of color that you're trying to like engage with. And then they want to like trot out their laundry list of things that they've done. And how could you say this? And they just can't stop like centering it around themselves when it isn't about them. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it was very heartening to me, Catherine, that you were like, I felt uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That's it. You yeah. don't have to really say too much else. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you did say you're not a racist, but I already said that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just want to be clear. Thank you, yes. And and so so I I I I don't know. There was just so there was a lot in that film, and I I agree with you, James, around this idea that it's like it's so many films in one. Sure. Yeah, right. You know? To yeah, yeah. I there were times when I felt like it wasn't sure what movie it was being like at a particular moment, and mm. it kind of slid in in and out of them. I'll say. I've got it. So it's again. We saw this movie so recently. <laughs> I wanted it to be right. fresh. And I wanted a hot take. <laughs> but the way the way my mind works is that's my thing is that my hot takes are, and I think this is maybe common, and this is why hot takes are known as hot takes. I'm I usually go to the critical space first. Yeah. So it's like it's so I can you. kind of think of the things I. Didn't like about it more than anything. Yeah. I like, knew I could feel it coming off you like a white person at the movies. <laughs> I, Catherine over here <laughs> is coming from a place of her heart and like an artist and an actress. And I felt like she was like really involved in the Soaking film. It in. And I was her crying feelings. a lot. Yeah, like I could, you know what I mean? Like I feel like you were into it. And then yeah. you were being like uh, what I would definitely classify as like a white male. Like, sure. Like that, that. 
I talk about that, that Glenn Singleton thing, the idea of like white talk versus color commentary. And when you're talking about race, all that means is like you have emotion when you're talking about it. Right. So like that little feeling in your eyes like welling up a little bit just right now when you mm-hmm. were talking to us and saying you felt uncomfortable, yeah. like that's color commentary. That's having an emotional like reaction to something. Sure. Right. And so I feel like you're so... You can't see me, world, but I'm making a square around James. Because yeah. I feel like that that's how you, but that's who you are. I mean, yeah. that's how I'm, I generally am with like a film or a piece of art that I'm like seeing for the first time. But it is also like it's 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 on a because the film is so political and social, I don't I mean my my feelings are all tied up in my kind of intellectual analysis. The thing that I was going to say that I didn't love about it was the the clan characters felt like very 90s movie clan guys to me. They were all just mm. laughable and stupid, which mm. that yeah. is kind of the danger that led us to where we are right now. Right. That we think mm. every clansman is some toothless yokel like drooling all over himself. Right. And we're not ready to acknowledge that actually they are the guy on your block who has three kids and makes six figures and wears polos and goes golfing. Like, and so that was kind of a thing that bugged me where I was kind of like, eh, that's where I think Spike shows his age a little bit and Mm -hmm. his, and his origin because we're New Yorkers as well. Yeah. Our generation and our geographical location in New York I mean, I'll speak for myself. Mm -hmm. You have a dad from the South, so Mm -hmm. you probably have more perspective in addition to Mm -hmm. being black as well. But like, we just talked about racism like it was a joke when I was a kid. The notion that like, there were still rednecks running around burning crosses was kind of hilarious. And like, they would be these toothless idiot yokels in all the movies and the TV shows, and it let us feel like it was over. Yeah. I don't know. That was just, that. that's just a little I, yeah, criticism. I know, but yeah. I feel like I totally disagree with you because I don't feel like that rang hollow at all. I think that is the point. And I felt like it was definitely like a, <clears throat> like a Spike Lee, like I'm gonna slap you with this bitches. Right. Because that's, I mean, it's, it's happening. Right. And it's been happening. And like, so for me, and I'm, I'm sure I mentioned this before, but I went to college in upstate New York. Right. SUNY Fredonia and the semester before I started there was a cross burning on my campus Mm -hmm. and that is 1996 right yeah right Mm -hmm. and so it was I remember we were like sitting in fucking Applebee's from shit with my parents and they're like why are you going to college here and then my dad opens up the paper and he's like they still haven't found the people who burned the crosses and he's like what and so I mean it's just it's that kind of Mm -hmm. thing and then like one of the things I loved about that film, though, is, like, the horror of those things happening so recently and right. in a place right. where we're, like, just down the road from us, right? right? In my neighborhood, which is named after uh, Stapleton, who was Mayor Ben Stapleton, who oh, was right. a high-ranking member of the Ku Klux Klan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when people who voted to not change the name of our neighborhood association, like, I feel like all those motherfuckers need to go and watch that movie to yeah, understand, sure. like... Then they have this character of David Duke played by that 70s show yeah. kid, yeah, right? Yeah, Grace. But then, but then David Duke, just, just last year, is just out there praising Donald Trump. Like, oh, yeah, these people right. are here, mm-hmm. you know? Right. These things happened. And, right. like, my aunt and uncle had crosses burned on their lawn because right. they were attorneys, you know? They had bricks thrown through their window and just sure. and shit. And, like, this is, like, in West Virginia. And it's not 500 years ago. Right. Right. Well, and what bothered me, like, during the scene with the police stopping the people taking, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture. A.K.A. Stokely to Carmichael. The, um, to the airport. I kept, I was thinking, like, how is this, like, this still happens. Yeah. Like, a lot. And it's like, this is taking place in the 70s. Like, how much time has gone by? And it's still happening. Like, it just... Yeah. yeah, it's really heartbreaking. And- well, and even right before we went to this movie, I was at um, I was at a community meeting with our new chief of police here in Denver. And, you know, that's one of the things that's like where they that's where they are, because they have, we obviously have this like white supremacist 
Ku Klux Klan member, you know, police officer in the film. Mm-hmm. Whichever, right. that guy, well, I don't even know what yeah, that yeah. Landers, Landers. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sorry. Yeah. But anyway, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh, but <laughs> I am because I'm like, uh, that guy was good, dude. He was good. Uh, his acting yeah, was like on point. Right. Ugh. And I had something else to say, and I'm so sorry, but I wanted to say the one thing, though, before, now I'm off subject, but no. it doesn't matter. It's all the same subject. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you said that you feel like the characters were like these, like, toothless, like, yokel types, I felt like the only character that was really like that was that ooh, like the drunk the really guy. Gross, yeah. But I felt like Walter, that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Walter was pretty. Yeah. He Walter was like was a like, regular guy. He seemed nice and he was like attractive. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like looking at his body and stuff. Yeah. I was like, hmm. And that he was, was even in his demeanor and his behavior, he was never really shown as anything but likable. No, he was right. like charismatic right. and like. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So no, I right. felt I felt like those yokels, I felt like that yokel character was intentional. I think so too. To make it to 100%. remind us that like this is what we think they are, but right. really, but really they're Walter, Walter, really they're David Duke. And let's be clear, there are a lot of those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. those guys do exist yeah. also. Right. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So I don't know. Anyway, that was just God damn it. I shouldn't be recording these things so late at night. <laughs> um <laughs> That's all right. We're getting oh, there. We we'll get there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> I had one other thing to say that has nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> I mean, it does. And I'm talking about Adam Driver for a moment. Yeah. Yes. Please. So, and I thought it was funny because I did. You guys watch Girls? Are you familiar with the mm-hmm. series Girls? I never all? watched. Okay, I so know what. I've so, seen the whole thing. I know what it's about. Okay, yeah. So you know. Mm-hmm. So I would just say though, when I watched that show, Adam, his character made me like kind of. Sick because I yes. he reminded me of some like pretty shitty boyfriends I had and the yeah. way he treated he was a terrible person. Yeah, he was like a really bad person. Yeah. And but I like think he's kind of hot. Right? Because he's so talented. No. Like, no. So this is what's interesting okay. though, because I said that and I said it to Danette, and she said something I thought was very interesting. Hmm. And she said, I think it's because like for black people, like things that are maybe not in the realm of like what would necessarily be considered like the white standard of beauty, mm-hmm. we sometimes will take in people who Drunk are not, it. who are don't maybe necessarily fit that standard and find them attractive. Uh-huh. And I thought uh-huh. that was just kind of an, I hadn't thought of it like that. And I thought, but it like made sense to me because I'm like, he's not like attractive. Right. And like for you, you're like, oh, but he's such a good actor. I think, I think he's I could, so sexy. Yeah, but I, but I feel like I, I feel like I know he like shouldn't be attractive to sure. me. But I like, I'm like, mm, I'm like, I would tap that. I mean, I think he's a good looking <laughs> guy. That. He's not a, you know. I think he's got like a fucking horse face. Yeah, he totally Hi, has Adam, a horse face. If you're listening, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a horse sexy. face, homie. But she's hot, he's sexy, and you can tap this ass. I mean, especially with the, when it, with his hair long. I know yeah. you have a Keanu thing. He looks a little like yeah, Keanu. Yeah, but Keanu is. You know that me and Keanu are still getting married if if Ken like dies or something. <laughs> I love you, Ken. <laughs> Keanu. Keanu forever. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, sorry, I was off subject on that. But yes, no, that's okay. shit is still happening. It happens yeah. on a regular basis, and that was why, like, when I was at that meeting, you know, they were like going over all their paperwork and oh, we're gonna p- implement this policy and we have a new use of force policy and all of this stuff, and I'm just like. Yeah, but why are you using force? Sure. Right. Exactly. Why Why is that even happening? Why? Answer that question for me right now. Right. And they can't answer it because the answer is, oh, shit, America is like a terribly racist country. And that was one of those lines that from like, I'm assuming it's like tapes of David Dukes that they, or speeches they like re-recorded or whatever in the film. But he's like, America is a racist country. It's this country for, you know? And I feel yeah. like, yeah, that's true. Sure. There's mm-hmm. no, like, getting around that. Um, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm wondering what other, like, people in your lives, what do you think they can get out of this film? I I think my, my, my honest response and feeling is that I have to go with the knowledge we have that for the most part, you only really convince people of things that they kind of already believe. And I think that to a 
maybe the average audience, I'm not going to say the average audience because the majority of America is progressive, um, to the people that maybe you have in mind, the, um, the sort of mainstream white moderate. I think it's easy for a movie like this to just be another Mississippi burning where you're mm. like, oh, thank God it's not like that anymore. Like that's basically Sorry. the only lesson to take from it. Unless you have some opening in you where you're prepared to see um, the link between the David Dukes of the world and the Donald Trumps of the world. And if you've, if you've been at least cracked open a little bit in that, yeah. then I think the movie is tremendously effective at drawing those lines. Um, but I don't know how many hearts and minds it's going to change of people who are already shut down the second you imply that there's a link between white supremacy and conservatism right. in America right now. But I... I I, I would be hesitant to overestimate how many people uh, who are still somehow not convinced that there's something wrong where this film is going to push them over the edge. Sure. I just, I don't see that. Mm. Yeah. Which is not a failure of the film. It's a movie. Um, yeah. But right. yeah. That, that, that's my... Well, I think thought. it's interesting because what I thought of when in the scene where Harry Belafonte is telling that story mm -hmm. um, and talking about Birth of a Nation, I was thinking about H. Soul and Black Panther when they when you know they're like, well, it's a movie, and they they killed that boy because they watched that movie mm -hmm. and everybody saw it the year before, right? right? And so sometimes like our our stuff, it isn't it isn't just a movie, yeah, right? You know, and I feel like the things that are happening now, I mean, I don't even know what to do anymore. I feel like that happens all the time. And this is when I would turn to Greg and say, what do I do, Greg? Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like I say that every every episode. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> you know? I don't know. Do you feel like, Catherine, you must know some old crazy crackers. So, well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so, so, like, do you think that any of those people, would, what do you think they would get out of that? Or if anything? Well, I think the difficult thing with a movie like this is that it attracts a certain audience of people who are aware of all this mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, like the, the crazy <laughs> crackers that I know wouldn't even want to take the time to sit down and watch it. Yeah. And I think that's like... I don't know. I think it's important to watch movies like this, even if it is like so in your, especially because it's so in your face. Yeah. Because I think that when I watch a movie like that, like I just learn so much about the other side of things that like growing up in North Dakota as a predominantly white state, like I didn't know about a lot of Did things that were going on. Either? No, we knew like one black family. And that's did they, it. Did they move here? Because I feel like I know one. Oh, no, they're from Wyoming. Never mind. <laughs> I confuse those places. Yeah. Not good at geography. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but yeah, so coming from that, and then now I live in the South. So I just like, I love to just absorb. I mean, I just love absorbing everybody. Like, I like learning things about something I don't know. You know, like yeah. a religion I don't know. Or, you know, uh, just different backgrounds I think is so fascinating. And so I just... I thought it was really funny, though, when we were talking last night and you were like, when I came to Denver, I was like, wow, there's so many black people here. That's what she said. And then she moved to the that. South. And then she was like, wow, there's really a lot of black like, Oh, this is a lot of black people. <laughs> you know what, though? I mean, that's like a good, that's interesting because I know, I, I know a dude from, uh, who's originally from Utah, uh, born and raised and uh, not, and not from SLC. He's from... Ogden, I want to say, um, and grew up Mormon. And, uh, you know, he's a smart guy and he's not an ignorant guy and he's a progressive guy, but he's just like, he's just like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't knowingly meet a Jew until I was in my late twenties. Same. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I didn't meet, I won't say he didn't meet a black person, but he was like, I didn't know on any personal level a black person except when he got sent off on mission or whatever mm. the Mormons call it. Yeah. Um, 
here in America until he started traveling outside of Utah. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, there are a lot of people who just straight up don't have exposure. And I wonder if those markets you know, is there, is there multiplex even playing black Klansmen? I right. don't know. Because I don't think yeah. like in North Dakota where I grew up, like they probably maybe had it for two weeks and nobody went to it. I'm sure. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, you know, the audience for it isn't there. Yeah. So it probably didn't do well. And then they pulled it when, you yeah. know, some big crazy movie came out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The Meg. Yeah, right. This episode of then, Color is brought to you. <laughs> that plays in the Meg. <laughs> I like to. I don't know anything about that movie, but I've I seen the it. title of the thing. <laughs> you saw it <laughs> right before I saw Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> you got to the movie so much. I got the movie all the time. I, I have this really movie. stupid idea of just like it should be like. It's a rom com, and it's like <laughs> Meg Ryan is the Meg. The Meg. <laughs> like, it's about like a big shark that eats people or yeah, something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just kept hearing about it. I don't know. Oh, we did it. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, and then I don't know. Since you said you didn't read anything about it, I no. was relying mm-hmm. on you because I thought you knew what the beef was. No, I mean, I... With the Boots Riley. I, mean, I avoided as best as I could. So, like, I did see Boots's thread about it. And, and of course, you know, I heard, like, the NPR story about um, the real... Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. I just listened to his name for Ron two and a half Stoller. hours. Ron, Ron Stall. <laughs> yeah. Um, I heard the NPR story. but So it's not like I was totally oblivious, yeah. but, like, I just deeply didn't want to know how it end, yeah. ended or anything. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, I only know a little bit about the Boots beef. I mean, basically what, what Boots Riley's take was, uh, he took great pains to say that he thought it was a well-made film and that he wasn't trashing Spike. Um, but that, um, that the degree to which, uh, Stallworth spent a lot of his career, uh, undermining labor activism and racial justice mm-hmm. activism is downplayed and that basically he has been like just as much an enemy of, Mm -hmm. of the radical left and of, you know, street gangs and stuff as he's been of the clan. It's not like the flagship of his career was, uh, was fighting the clan. And it's that he's a more complicated character and specifically a more complicated character where any kind of leftist or black politics would be involved. And that that's kind of like scrubbed out of the movie. So that's the reason that our friend Elizabeth Epps Mm -hmm. is not at this table right now. Yeah. Because I was just with her at that community meeting and she said, I said, hey, you want to go see the movie? And then she said, no, I can't. I heard the interview. And you know how she is. God, I love you, Elizabeth. Um, I don't know if you if people know, but Elizabeth Epps is actually um, sentenced to go to jail on Monday, August 27th, which is actually the day this episode's going up. Not sure. Hopefully, we've been writing letters on her behalf. But one of the things that it came to my mind when we we're talking about that is how we can see like two different things mm-hmm. or like the interpretation of it. Like you're being like, well, if someone's heart and mind isn't open, then they just like shut down and they can't see it. Right. And so I was thinking about her story and I hadn't seen the video of the actual incident. So just quick background, Elizabeth Epps was um, found guilty for obstructing the police um, yeah, in an incident in yeah. 2015 and it was um she was at a swimming pool in a complex apartment complex this kid who happened to be white um was having some kind of mental breakdown elizabeth was helping him somebody had called the cops and then when the cops came the situation kind of escalated in part, um, because Elizabeth kept telling the kid, you don't need to talk to these police. There was nothing really going on, but I felt like me watching it, it was like watching some high school bullies. Like, do you have any friends that became cops that you knew in high school? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have to say, like, I do too. And I feel like those jerks, you know what I mean? Like they were yeah. jerks in fucking high school and now they're jerks on the police god. Yeah. And so on when I trip, yeah, completely. And so when I watched that video of her, of what happened, I just can't believe that this young woman this brilliant like lawyer and mother and activist is going to have to go to jail 
over some bullshit like that right. because she like ruffled the feathers of some police officers and they should have just walked away and right. instead they like slam her into a fence and like twist her arm and you can hear her like crying out in pain. Yeah. And so like that's the video I watched mm-hmm. and then sorry to throw your pops under the bus <laughs> but he saw a completely different fucking video. Yeah. Well that's not surprising to me. Well it wouldn't be surprising to me I guess. Um well, you know, that's not the only one. I had another, sure. a person of color that I shared in one of my groups, and she was kind of like, I don't see what, what, why you think your friend did anything, like why you don't understand why yeah. she got arrested. I was going to say that I think, um, I mean, obviously with Elizabeth um, being a black woman and being active in the community in the way that she is, uh, there's no way to fully remove race from it. Um, but I'm not surprised. I was going to say, I think there would be a lot of people of color who would have a similar take. I mean, we're in, we're a very authoritarian minded society. We're a, we're a society that is, we're all frightened of our own shadows, uh, and, and terrified white people, especially, but it's pretty, it's pretty well ingrained into our culture. Mm -hmm. We're a fearful culture. Mm. Um, it's some annoying new age shit, but I do believe in that thing that um, you're you're always either walking in love or fear, and um, America walks in fear. That's mm-hmm. how we live, mm-hmm. and fear results in uh, clinging to authoritarians who make you feel safe, even at the expense of your freedom or your humanity. And that is how we look at cops and a person. I th- I think that the typical American would watch that video and would say, yeah, that's what happens when you piss off a cop. Right. With no recognition that, right, that's usually what people say in banana, Republic, banana republics and you know authoritarian regimes and places that are run by thugs. Uh, they don't have any perception that America is one of those places. Mm. But like... Yeah, that's like what you say. I, my question to to a person like that who would respond to that is um, if, if you frequently find yourself in life saying, oh, well, if you'd just done what you should have done, everything would be fine. <laughs> Ask yourself honestly, do you have any doubt in your heart that you would have been the person saying the same thing to Rosa Parks or Jews in a Warsaw ghetto or whoever? If you're, if the, if the farthest your moral compass can take you is, well, you just should have listened. Then y- you are the tool that oppressors rely upon to diminish humanity and make society the way that it is. And so, and unfortunately, it's, it usually takes good, nice, friendly pillars of the community to be those people. And the more of those people there are, the worse the society is. And that's why our society fucking sucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's, it's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Pretty terrible. I mean, because even at the, the, the film tonight, the, the trailer for um, Michael Moore's new film mm-hmm. that's coming out. Yeah. Like... I did feel like that was a really powerful image, though, of him being like the last president of the United States, yeah. and it was Donald Trump's. But I feel like I'm feeling like that. I'm feeling like our shit is like for real, like imploding. Yeah. Is it? Is it really? I hope not, but it <laughs> feels that way. Doesn't it though? Doesn't <laughs> it, really it feel does. really bad? It really I mean, feels I feel that absolutely awful. anything could happen. Right. Like we were talking about last night with The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. Like things like that. It's like, that is not that far off. Like, no, it's too accurate. Happen. Have you seen that Very shit? Soon. I love The Handmaid's Tale. And, and they do a great job of uh, going to flashbacks yeah. and showing the period when things weren't yet that yeah. bad. Right, but That's they like were slowly they do a good job starting to get weird. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, it's just like that, that it wasn't when you see like, the people boom, shoveling that toxic waste in the gulag or whatever, yeah. you can be like, okay, well, that's crazy, horrible, unrealistic, whatever. They do a great job of showing those flashbacks where just the little things happen, where she gets, mm-hmm. like, uh, needled by the nursery school about how she has a job and didn't change her last name or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, 
Well, I could see that shit happening today. Right. At a preschool in America. Yeah. Like, and so that that's really effective. That it is. No. Handmaid's it, Tale it, is it's the greatest. Really, it's yeah. like it is. so terrifying. I actually stopped yeah. watching it. I, I got to get back to it, but I... You, the, you have to take a break. The most the most it's recent season watch. starts to feel a little like torture porn at times. It is. You know, it is. Bit. Oh, it is. But it I was is. like, I'm in <laughs> deep. I can't get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Episode, so, I think it was episode eight. No, man. That I like I lost my shit. I don't know if yeah. I, I like that far. couldn't yeah. handle like I ha- I had to be like physically held by my husband for a long time afterwards. It like made me physically. Ken can't Ill. even watch it. Ken's yeah, like, nah. Ken doesn't watch it the either. last it's episode I watched much. was the one where she kind of dissociates and oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. feels guilty about oh, when she realizes that oh. the, the Muslim guy who saved her uh, yeah, was yeah, hanged yeah, and yeah, yeah, right. all that. After that one, I'm just like, I don't know. Life is like heavy. I've been doing activist <laughs> shit. I'm back in school. I'm like learning stuff, and I'm like, man, I don't want to watch this shit on TV. Like, you yeah. watch like some it's comedy. Yeah, that's like, like, I've been watching that Unreal show. I'm like, yeah. I love like that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's like a guilty. No, you do want to like project. take a break. And that yeah. was oh, that was something too. I liked in the movie though that I thought I thought was actually a really powerful scene was when. After the car stop, and then he's just like, let's just dance. And they dance yeah. and they sing. And I love how, like, long that scene went mm-hmm. on, actually. And I, I just, the music, like, I loved that, but it did make me feel like, because that is something that, I mean, I don't think, think it's exclusive to people of color, but I, I do, I feel that. Like, I feel like, because if we can't laugh or we can't have joy in life, Mm-hmm. even with all the shit that's going on, like, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, because right. sometimes, like, because I have some of these friends that are maybe like a little bit newly woke or whatever, and they're just like on their rants and just going so crazy. And I'm like, yeah, word, it's fucked up. But like, I'm also kind of like, just take a, you could take a breather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah, could go to the like, movies. <laughs> like, you know, you could, you could take a minute off. And yeah. I mean, and then, so that was funny when, in the movie Patrice, when she's like, no, I can never like set it down. And I don't think I ever really set it down. Right. Cause even I feel like my jokes are always like rooted in that like truth of, of my experience and what's happening. But still I'm kind of like, yeah, we have to keep going. Mm-hmm. But I think that that's one of the reasons that I've been so angry lately and I'm having some trouble in my day life. And then people are like, why don't you drink so much booze, Rebecca? And I'm like, well, what the fuck else are we supposed to do? I need an escape. What are we supposed to do? So, I don't know. Can I say a little side note about the music? Yes, baby. Like, I'm not, I haven't seen a lot of Spike Lee Mm -hmm. joints. (laughs) <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved that the music was like its own character. Mm. I mean, I found myself like, I mean, you were getting into it and then I was like, get into <laughs> it too. And I just love that. Yeah, there were a couple scenes that it was like, it just kept going on, but I dug it. Like, yeah. yeah. And the music was just such a big part of it. Yeah. It's really cool. I thought the music was cool. And I thought, I thought there was a lot of interesting choices in there though, too. Like I, I yeah. liked it. I felt very entertained, mm-hmm. but at, at, at the same time, I felt like I, I loved that. Like I love, and it was one of the reasons I love Sorry to Bother You, the same mm-hmm. reason where you're like, one of the reasons I love doing this show, because I feel like, God, I hope we're helping people, educating people in, in some way or yeah. making them think about things they hadn't thought about, mm-hmm. but also to like have a good time doing it, right? That right. like infotainment. And it was so funny because I feel like I said that in one of the episodes. I was like, I call it infotainment. And my, and my husband was like, you call it infotainment? And he's like, that's a fucking word. Yeah, that's been a thing for and a I'm long like, time. Oh, it is? <laughs> I thought I made that up. <laughs> I call it, it's like a broadcast that you listen to on your iPod. It's like a podcast. <laughs> Should I trademark that? <laughs> it's an infotainment podcast. It is. You nailed it. All right. Well, this episode <laughs> is brought to you by the Meg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. We're going to sign off. Catherine, where can we see you, find you, hear from you? You got any upcoming shows? Uh, nothing upcoming yet, but um, if you'd like, you can follow me on the Instagram at, um, I believe it's at real Catherine Earhart. All right. Awesome. Catherine with a C, y'all. With a C. So thank you so much for being here. Of course. And I cannot experience. wait 
to see you in your next feature film. Thank you. Thank you. All right, White James, you're going to take us out? You're going to take us home? You're going to bow chuck a wow wow? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You could have easily been the white Ron (laughs) Stallworth. Like, you could have, like, I could be the, I could be the, Off Color is a presentation of Tan Tigris Productions, hosted by Rebecca Henderson, produced by me, James Meekham, music also by me. Follow us on Twitter at Off Color Pod, on Facebook at Off Color Podcast, and subscribe to us on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Uh, check back in in two weeks for part two of To Tweet or Not to Tweet with our guest, Sonia Gupta. Thanks for listening. <laughs>